Okay, the first thing you need to do is get some, so you read that, zero lead uh, from Zephyrtronics is where I get this. You want to let it heat up to warm room temperature if possible. And then just apply it, solder paste to each pad. This takes a while and your thumb will get sore after a while. Getting a solder stencil is the best way. If you go over the pads, it doesn't really matter too much. The solder mask will keep the solder from going other places, and it'll stay on the pad. Then we have a SOIC 16 here, and on these you want to stay on the outside or the outboard pins to help prevent a solder bridge. And you can try and do a little dot on each one, but with these larger ones, this is about, I don't know, I guess a 0 .1, 0 .1 pitch maybe, I just drag a small line. across all the pins. See that? I mean, even on these, all these other pads, you can try and stay towards the outboard of where the even the small resistor will go because the surface tension will draw the solder into the part. Less likelihood of a solder bridge between the two. Now you want to use some really good tweezers that will definitely let go of the part. There's no surface tension, very fine point. Okay, so this is the same board I just did, uh, except I have a good stencil now versus the syringe. And I'm just going to do one of these boards. So I have all this set up. It's all lined up. Here's my solder paste. And it's at room temperature already. start this let me just zoom in a little bit so you'll be able to watch that or see that not too bad So you can see here is the hot air solder leveled pads bare and then here we go, I don't know how close I can get. They all look pretty good. You can even see the ones that were half done. So here is the solder that I'm using. The 6337 is what I like to use. And the expiration date is, uh, I've used Plenty of things like this well past our expiration date. Just keep it in the fridge every time you're not using it. Uh, should last for quite a long time. Okay, so here we are in the toaster oven and I'm going to press the timer start and turn it on. Turn on the oven. So usually uh, about 400 degrees, 3 80 or so, it'll start to wick and actually finish the soldering. Okay, started the timer, turned down the oven. About four to five minutes or so is what it'll take. 
we'll see here in a minute the solder how it'll puddle up and then wick up into the part one and a half minutes and then you can see it pools up and you can see the resistors at first you think oh no what have I done everything's just going to be a big solder ball mess but as you'll see here the magic will take hold and everything will look much better like a professional board two minutes three and a half minutes four and a half minutes you can see the pin starting to show through on the SOIC chip there it should wick up pretty soon and you'll see them all pop as in they'll all get really shiny you'll know they're done oh there you go you see it getting wicked up It all kind of happens all around the same time. You can see some of the resistors there. It looks like there's some solder bridges underneath, and then now they separated. And then as I look over the rest of the board, they all seem to be pretty shiny. And then I'll leave it in there for another few seconds and then just take it out okay here we go with the other board turn it on have it set at 400 degrees and we're starting the timer
Okay, so here we go. I just opened up the door. There's a lot of heat coming out. We can see if I can get in there. There's a tombstone one right there. Oh, not going to be able to see it. I'll show it to you in a minute. So the toaster oven I am using is one I got from JCPenney, or it was a JCPenney, I guess, scratch and dent. And let's see here. That is 1400 watts, which is really the only setting you need to know. And I just had that one on convection. Uh, I've done it before, just on regular bake also, but convection I figure might be more easy. Set it at 400 and it took about, let's see, about a minute, minute late, so uh, five minutes or so from dead cold to finished. Okay, and well now that that's done, we can see we have some issues. We have a tombstone happening there, as you can see by R4, the uh, resistor has popped up, and that was because the solder on the pad that is alone over there was not touching the resistor when the other side cured, and the surface tension pulled it up. Not a big deal to fix that, and you can also see R5 and R10 uh, do not have anything on them, and that's the same with uh, several more throughout the board. So I'm going to put those on and we're not going to obviously put it back in the oven. We will do this by hand and I'll show you that and then we also need to on the back side put the LEDs on for uh, for the line following. So hopefully you can see that well. I'm going to try and just reuse the solder that we have. So what I'm going to do Grab this resistor, heat the pad, take it off, and then see if I'm better right handed. You want to hold it down next to the pad as close as possible and tack one side down. It's good for that side. And this side, just be able to reflow. And that's that. Not as pretty because you did start off on top of a uh, mound of solder. And you can use a hot air nozzle if needed. And of course, since I forgot a few resistors, we're going to place them now. Do using the same same method, of course. Just to be able to see that. So these ones are a little bit longer. This next one here will require a little bit of solder. That should be good. Okay, now we're going to put the LEDs on. These will go on the top. These are just a visual indicator of where the line is. So, hold it in place, grab a little bit of solder,
forgot my flux pen here. This is a necessity. It makes everything look so much better. So, and then we get the old solder off and tack this side. Let's redo this side so it looks pretty.